Hi everyone! Welcome to Camilla Cava Food Photography Podcast, a place where I interview talents in the food photography industry to help you and myself grow a food photography career. On today's podcast, I talk with Heather Barnes, a food photographer and stylist based in Austin, Texas. Heather is known for her romantic feeling images and her blog, Mrs. Barnes, where she shares simple and seasonal recipes. While Heather enjoys working with small local businesses, she has also worked with big names such as Girardelli and Bob's Red Mill. Today we talk about her journey to becoming a food photographer, the differences between working for small versus big clients, her usual client workflow, tips about photographing ice cream and many more topics. So let's welcome Heather. Hi Heather, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's so nice to have you. So for the listeners that may not know you, could you introduce yourself, who you are and what do you do? Yes, um, I'm Heather Barnes. I'm a commercial food and product photographer based in Austin, Texas. And I also run the blog, Mrs. Barnes, that focuses on romantic recipes and oh. simple entertaining. Oh, I love that positioning, romantic recipes. Could you tell us, <laughs> could you tell a bit more about that? Like, how did you come up with the idea? I, I I feel like that's, it's kind of evolved um, over the last few years. Uh-huh. I, I just like everything to be beautiful and I want that to be my life. I want everything to be garnished with flowers and overly styled and it's all very feminine. Um, yeah. I'm very inspired by, by flowers and by nature and I try and incorporate as much of that as possible mm. in my recipes and my photos. So I'm like, I think they, I, I can call them romantic recipes, yeah. right? <laughs> no, that's lovely. I think that's a beautiful positioning over it. Yeah, nice. And how long have you been doing it? How long have you been blogging and how long have you been photographing? I have, I started my blog two years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I moved to Austin, I took some online food photography classes. Okay. That was about two years ago, but I did buy my first DSLR in 2014, mm-hmm. and uh, I started shooting my friends. Um, all my fr- I lived in Los Angeles, and all my friends were yeah. models and actors, and everyone uh-huh. always needs photos. So uh-huh. I started taking um, portraits and mm-hmm. um, more fashion, and just dabbled in it. I did never really did it seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, and food was something I ne- didn't even think about as a subject uh-huh. um, until I, you know, until people started posting on Instagram and I started seeing all these beautiful, like romanticized photos of food mm-hmm. and picnics in a field. Um, and that's really where I, I, I was like, I, I want to learn how to do this. They're, they're yeah. creating this whole experience and story uh-huh. and and then when we moved uh, to Austin, I didn't know anyone to photograph. So yeah. I started photographing everything I was cooking. Uh-huh. And that's kind of where it began. Uh-huh. So really only two years, but having the, the knowledge of using, you know, learning, I knew, I knew how to use a camera, a camera yeah. and I studied art um, in college. So mm-hmm. having the background of like, knowing how to compose a photo yeah. um, helped a lot when it came to food uh-huh. you just I kind of learned like the basics like the foundational okay if you're shooting a cake it's probably yeah. better to do it straight on and like once yeah. you learn these foundational tools then uh-huh. you just run wild with it yeah yeah that makes sense oh so cool so let's say your beginning was photographing people and and fashion as you mentioned do you think that gave you any um, like influence on the photography of food in terms of, I don't know, do you look at it, you think, from different perspective as if you, let's say, would, would have started photographing immediately food or do you think that's not really the case? Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty different. I still like having, like being able to photograph people. Like I want to I wanna learn more mm-hmm. about self-portraits because uh, I want to oh, yeah. photograph myself more. Uh-huh. Um, I love all of the, the photos that, that people use, like when they, you know, they have their hands and it yeah. tells more of a story. And that's something I'm working more on is mm-hmm. how can I tell a story and 
Yeah. How can a photo not look? Because I I think it's easy to like overly style something mm -hmm. where it looks so placed, but some there's some photographers that just do it so well where you mm -hmm. it looks like you just left the scene mm -hmm. and there's you can see what's going on and there's there's so much more to it mm -hmm. um and I think that's that's really challenging to do yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. so I think yeah and then at, like at definitely editing um like skin tone, I, I did that for years, so that 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 helped with some. That helped. That's um, important one because sometimes I see pictures where I mean the skin looks like a dead person green. is holding because <laughs> yeah. it's super green or blue. Yeah, so that's an important know. skill, definitely. Yeah, so I think everything has um, you know come together mm -hmm. and helped you know develop the whole journey of learning how to photograph food, and, and it's 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 like a lifelong journey of learning there's like always something something new all oh, for sure work on. for sure yeah that's an exciting thing about food photography I think there's always like place for improvement and learning and developing and yeah it's so exciting it is I know and I watch you I, I love watching all your videos because you like to try all these new techniques like <laughs> I love this you're so inspiring to watch thank you yeah same like you I want to I want to add that something extra to the image where there is I don't know something to stop from people from scrolling so I'm trying all new kind of actions and things like that hopefully to to do that <laughs> yeah, yeah that's so important where everyone's starting to look so similar yeah yeah, finding a way out. <laughs> so, okay, getting back to your, let's say, um, getting to where you are right now. So you, you started photographing people and then you decided to, um, to switch to food. Um, so how did it work for you um, to get the clients? Because right now you're commercial food photographers. So you, as I understand, you work with the clients as well. So how did that, let's say, step went from just shooting for yourself and your food dinners uh, at home to actually try starting to shoot for the clients? So I started uh, very small. I went to all of the farmers markets in Austin mm -hmm. and I, I made business cards, um, that, you know, from Office Depot, which is like right next door. Uh -huh. And they printed them out within a day. And I took them to the farmer's market and I gave them to every single vendor. And I, I just confidently said, I'm a food photographer. Oh, I just nice. moved here. Here's my, my, uh, my website. Um, and everybody needs photos. Like, I, and that's the that best thing about, it's like, everybody has to eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we already have a one up on other other types of photographers, right? Uh-huh. So <laughs> I reached out to uh, a bakery and they needed like a whole, you know, they wanted all of their baked goods shot. Uh -huh. So that was my first client and I did it for for free, which yeah. now I'm like, don't ever do anything for free. Yeah. But um it was great experience. They brought like all of their I mean th these they were from France and they were like uh -huh award-winning <laughs> pastry chefs so, so it was nice to first of all not have to make the food um yeah. but it, it was like a two-day shoot and uh I, you know then I had like I had built up my portfolio um and from there I it was mainly like word of mouth like I started mm -hmm. following all of the the influencers in Austin, the food influencers, and reaching out to restaurants. Uh -huh. And um, from there, it was like, it just kind of snowballed into, there's all these local businesses, like all my friends in this, um, in the food community here have a product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, they all, they all need photographs all the time. So yeah. Um, it just let like one, one person like led to another, led to another. And it just, it just went from there. Like, I don't uh -huh. even pitch anymore. It's like most no. of my clients are local and uh -huh. it's so fun to help, you know, these smaller businesses uh -huh. um, with really... like product photos for their website. So uh -huh. that's where it began. And then I did start an account. I started a separate Instagram account for okay. 
for more for like playing around and exploring different colors and not being so married to my trying to be so consistent and cohesive on Mm -hmm. my other Instagram account. Mm -hmm. Um, So it allowed me to just play and post more often and use the the right hashtags. Um, Every single post I put up there, it, you know, it has that like Austin food photographer Uh and I'm just more discoverable because I have a separate account. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the best things I did. All, most of my clients come from Instagram. Separate account from what? From your personal account? From my Mrs. Barnes, Uh which is more of my blog. Right. Um, I started blending, you know, I could talk about this for hours because I'm still not sure how to brand myself. But Uh just by starting a, my other account, it's like Heather Barnes photo. Yeah. And right. I just started posting every single day, even if I was like reposting photos. Yeah. More people are, are seeing these photos with the necessary hashtags. Yeah. And every time I get a new client, I ask them, where did you find me? That's and it's good. always from hashtags. So mm-hmm. I know that they're working. Yeah. <laughs> Super local ones, right? Like, for example, right. food photographer Austin or, right? Mm-hmm. Something like and that. And think yeah. about... Yeah. I think about how everyone, how people are actually searching. Uh-huh. Are they typing, um, you know, Austin, it, it, they'll maybe type like ATX because that's short for Austin. Uh-huh. Maybe ATX yeah. food photographer, or just Austin photographers, um, Austin creatives. Um, yeah. So that's been really helpful having that account. And mm-hmm. um what else? <laughs> I think that's it. I have, I've never pitched to anyone. It's just been like no, the community here is so uh-huh. supportive and there's also not many food photographers here. Mm-hmm. So that helps. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> and yeah. I, I do love working with, with local, with local clients and uh-huh. smaller businesses. Mm-hmm. It's just, to me, it's less pressure too that makes sense and more creative freedom as well isn't it exactly Mm -hmm. and and a lot of the times they'll come into my studio and they'll want to help creatively direct which is amazing because then you're not guessing yeah about (laughs) what they want so it's always fun I always try and invite people into my home Uh and collaborate because I think that's the best that's the best part of it yeah, definitely. And I think it brings in the best results because then the client is more involved. They know the product better than you do. So you can work together and um, build beautiful pictures. Okay, that makes sense. So basically, in the beginning, you started pitching. And then right now, it's just your social media evolved. The targeted hashtags helped and word of mouth have helped. So now it's all just rolling by itself, right? Right. Awesome. So what would you say are then your client work? So what would be your client client workflow right now? So let's say a client reaches out to you. What happens then? I have developed this process over the last year and a half. Uh-huh. And I've learned so much from every single client. It's just, mm. it's, it's, it's helped me grow so much in running a business, which... <laughs> I don't consider myself to be very business savvy. I'm like, I wish I could have someone negotiate for me and mm, do all the that's so tedious, you know, dealing with the money and all that. I'm like, I just uh-huh. want to create. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's helped me grow my confidence so much. Um, every yeah. single client, I just iterate on the process. Mm-hmm. And um, what I do first is when someone sends me an email, I'll send them a link. I have an intake form that's a questionnaire and it's questions from how did you find me? Because that's really Mm -hmm. important for marketing. That's good. Yeah. (laughs) And it's about 10 questions that they have to fill out with. Tell me about your project. Tell me about your budget. um, What style are you looking for? Like Mm -hmm. send me some examples of Mm -hmm. what you're looking for, like what photos that I've taken that you like. Yeah, that's important um, as well. And then I can, from there, I can assess whether or not I want to take on this client. Uh-huh. Mm. 
And um, so from there, I decide if I want to do the project. Mm -hmm. And then I have put together a proposal, which is all in Canva Mm -hmm. uh, that I've designed where my original proposal was just a cover letter and like an invoice. Yeah. And now I've developed it to be a little bit more um, engaging, I guess. Uh Um, I have like a template with like a picture of me holding my camera, like looking happy. (laughs) I'm like, this is what I do. And this is what I can do for you. And it's it's kind of like an introduction, um, like who I am, like why I love photographing food. And, and then it'll, the next page is the, the whole process of Mm -hmm. here's where we're going to start. We're going to start with a mood board. Um, we're both going to collaborate on it. Um, then from there I will work on like concepting the photo shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll do some prep work. I, like I basically educate the client on how much goes into a yeah, shoot. Yeah, so that they can understand it. And that's, that's what I've learned. Oh my gosh, I've learned mm-hmm. <laughs> to do that over time because like the more transparent you are and the more communicative you are with them, um, I just feel like it, it produces a better uh, like client relationship mm-hmm. because then they're on board. They know what's going on. Like I overly communicate to them like, Hey, this is what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then these are the deliverables. This is what you'll get. And then the price below that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then some like, you know, some other images that I've taken and then there's like a closing page that says, thank you. I hope to work, work with you. Like, let me know if you have any questions. So when I send that as a PDF to them, um, it just seems a little bit more personable than what I used to do, which was just respond to their email like, yeah, this is what I charge. Um, let me know if you want to talk on the phone. Yeah. And I've just developed it more like every single client. I've learned to communicate everything. I've learned to like uh, modify my contract and say specifically um you know i I only hold on to photos for a year or uh, i i'm i take like an upfront deposit before i start any work because it's it's like there's always something that i've missed in the contract Uh or in the process where it comes around and i have to do a reshoot and i was like oh my gosh i didn't include no reshoots in Uh the contract so what now? One shoot I did yeah. like three reshoots because they weren't yeah. ha- happy with the results. So yeah. it just, I've learned so much over the last few so years. So do you <laughs> include now the like the resh- reshoot as a part in your contract as well, that it's allowed or how do you do with that? I, I say um, I, like after the first round of selections, I can... Mm. I will do one round of edits and uh-huh. color corrections, yeah. but if they want an entire reshoot, yeah, that's when I'll, I, I, I have something in there about sh- like charging extra for that. Okay. Right. And that makes sense. I also, it, it just, it's just all about like educating them because they don't understand what goes into it. Yeah. Like, do you realize I have to go back to the grocery store, buy ingredients, make this whole dish style and shoot it and edit it. I can't just, you can't just do it like it takes at least a whole day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and people think that, okay, you know, if I shoot something vertically, they're like, can we, can you turn, can you make this a, a horizontal stop motion or something? And uh-huh. I'm like, no, I, I really can't. Like that requires me shooting the entire thing again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think, I think the more we educate clients on and communicate beforehand, agree that helps. Yeah, definitely. Interesting. Definitely and you mentioned that you also ask for deposit before the shoot. It has in like in in case of cancellations or not. Yeah, that's just to protect myself from doing too much work. Uh, mm-hmm. If something were to happen, I I recently had a client. Um, they they ended up just shutting down their whole business and oh we had <laughs> we had we had spoken on the phone mm-hmm. uh i i spent you know I, I try and like add up all the hours that go into it yeah. just talking on the phone 
uh, email correspondence, coming up with the mood board, just thinking about it. I actually like bought new props for this shoot uh-huh. yeah. and I was, I was really excited about it. So I started working on it mm-hmm. and I probably put in six hours and they six. emailed me and just suddenly said, we, we had to shut down our business. So we have to cancel the shoot. Oh God. Yeah. So that was, uh, that was my fault, but um, I always ask before I start anything now, I say mm-hmm. 30% deposit upfront to begin any work. Okay. That's a good one probably. Cause I don't have that in my clause. But I feel like if there is a cancellation or stuff like that, it's, yeah, it makes sense. And you also make them sign a contract before starting a shoot as well then. Right, exactly. Okay. And I, now I have included that in the email um, to, to begin any work. Like, please sign the contract. Uh-huh. Um, here's how you can send the 30% deposit mm-hmm. uh, for me to even begin working. Mm-hmm. And, and is license included in that contract or you don't work with licensing? Sometimes I do with, with local clients that are a little bit smaller. Uh, I've tried to mm-hmm. add licensing and they're just like, wait, what? what they get, they yeah, like, yeah. I can't, I can't uh-huh. include this photo in, uh-huh. in email marketing mm-hmm. or marketing email. <laughs> so I, I've, I've just like, kind of bundled it into the overall creative fee yeah. um, with local clients. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you, you know, like working with larger clients, they expect that. Yeah. So sometimes they'll even reach out and say, okay, we want to license this photo. Yeah. And they, they take the lead, which is nice. I'm like, okay, I don't have to. That's easy. It. <laughs> it's always such a, a weird subject. Oh, the licensing is tricky, especially pricing it. I always spend like hours deciding what to price the licensing each time still. It's so tricky, I think. It's so oh. hard. I, and I try and use the Getty calculator. Um, yeah. I will just call them they have a phone number oh yeah website. and I call them and I explain like okay this is how it's being used uh-huh. can you give me some sort of idea of how much I should charge uh-huh and they're really helpful really um, yeah sick uh-huh so that's a good resource um uh-huh. but I do the same thing I I fret over the, how much to charge yeah and I, yeah. I'll, I'll just sit for like 24 hours i'm like i don't know i still don't know i don't know and then i ask no. everybody i know like what do you guys think about yeah. this yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh but that's oh. nice that getty apparently helps you with that as well and then probably tell you a more normal number because if you put that in calculator it just doesn't make any sense the number it gives no. not really like i feel i don't know it's um but of course, U.S. market is a bit bigger than Netherlands market, let's say. So for you, charging is different than for me, charging for licensing as well. Because the bigger the market, the different is the price, which helps. And in U.S., you are more aware of the licensing I, than here, I think. Mm-hmm. And I think um, I usually just, I think I include in the contract, like, up to a year of usage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um and I usually will just say, I can't even remember the exact term, but it's it's like unlimited usage for what they want to do with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not, I never give away the the copyright, copyright or anything, no. but you shouldn't. I think it just makes it easier until there's a, a larger client that wants to negotiate something. <laughs> uh huh. That makes sense. Yeah, usually how I do it is basically I include the digital uh, use license in already in basically my creative fee. And only if they need license for something mm-hmm. specific for print, that's when I would charge them for licensing. That's how I do it. Right. Yeah, but it's a, it's a, it's a tricky world. So I was curious um, how it works with you. And uh, the contract beforehand, I think, is a very, very helpful tool to also include, incorporate the licensing and communicate with the client as well what what, what they can expect. So I think that's a, that's, a, that's a good job. Awesome. Okay, so then the workflow works like that. And then uh, do you usually invite your clients on a shoot day as well? I do. I offer, I offer them that. Um, and I prefer it so that... There's no guesswork in, mm-hmm. you know, 
another thing I've learned is it's a red flag if if someone doesn't really know what they want. Uh, um, yeah. Because those those people have turned out to pick things apart after the first round of photos. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Then they decide, oh, oh, okay, actually, now that you've done this, oh, we want no. more of this. Or uh-huh. so. <laughs> I really like, I I watch out for that. Uh Um, And if they're kind of unsure about the style, like I really do try and encourage them to come over and and they can just chill on the couch and watch. Mm -hmm. Um, They can help creatively direct if they want to, but uh, I prefer that. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And it's nice having people around because- This can be a lonely profession if yeah. you are doing everything on your own. So I like having having people come over. Oh, help. that's nice. And then you should tether bait basically so that they can view what you're doing or not. Mm-hmm. Okay, exactly. that makes sense. And then, um, so we're already going through a process. I'm going to continue. That's okay. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> um, okay, so the shoot day happened. What's next? Do you um, make a selection on the day itself with the client or do you later send uh, images or do you make selection yourself of the images that you're going to edit? I, I usually go through Lightroom and I don't take as many photos as I used to. I'm sure <laughs> at the beginning, you know, you take 500 photos of the same that's pancake. So true. Like, yeah, they yeah, yeah, all yeah. The same. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. And now, now I'm like, okay, I get it down to like 20 at most uh-huh. of one scene. Like, uh-huh. you don't need much more. It's not like <laughs> the food has an expression that you're trying to capture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I will select um, like two to three options of each angle. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I edit one of them. If it's all, usually it's artificial <clears throat> light that I'm using yeah. and, uh, I just copy and paste the edits to all of them. Mm-hmm. That makes and it easier. I, I, I like to let, uh, the client decide which ones they like. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that process takes me so long to actually decide which one to send so if I have a contract that says I'm I'm delivering five to seven photos, I'll probably send them like 40 and I let them pick which ones to edit. So I, I briefly touch them up, but it saves me a lot of time not having to make those selects. I'd rather just copy paste edits. I upload them to uh, Pixie Set and I send them the link and then they can heart the ones they like. And then from there, I will go in and touch them up and send them away. <laughs> so you, you mentioned that uh, you uploaded to Pixel something. Pixie set. Yeah. What is that? Um, it's just a photo delivery software mm-hmm. that is still free for me. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't, I don't think they... I think they do offer storage, but I'm mm-hmm. I'm not paying for it. Um, I just think it looks like aesthetically, it's really pretty. Um, the way it's, it, it just looks like a nicer design than, uh-huh. I don't know, we, using WeTransfer or something. Mm-hmm. I, I on, honestly haven't even used anything else. Um, I just like the way it looks. Uh-huh. Um, and it just shows up as a pretty gallery and you and have the ability to favorite photos uh-huh. and then go in and see the client's favorites. And from there, and then you know, which ones you yeah. they picked. And do you edit further than the images that they picked like uh, in Photoshop cleanup or anything like that, or just the uh, Lightroom editing? I do. I, I go in and if they have specific instructions, okay, um, right. Uh-huh. I'll go in like a recent one I did uh, was an ice cream. It was like more of a graphic look Uh and they wanted like things cloned. Um, Uh So I'll go into Photoshop and do more detailed edits. Um, But usually it's, it's not much. I try and shoot it as close to what, Mm -hmm. what I want. I don't, I don't overly edit. I don't spend hours going in and, yeah, yeah, you get it right <laughs> from the beginning, which I, I saves try, a yeah, lot I, of time. Exactly, mm. exactly. And and if I do have to outsource 
I'll outsource a lot of the clipping tasks because people want yeah. to own like a solid background. Mm -hmm. um, I would rather spend my time creating and shooting than Cutting doing them something up. tedious. So... Oh, me too. I also outsource that, <laughs> like the the cropping out thing. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's so many companies that do it for yeah. so little. Yeah, you know, it's, and it's they work. do it very well as well. Exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah, then sometimes I'll outsource. If you need that. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And then when the basically photos are delivered and then do you follow up with clients in any way or do you do any after, I don't know, communication um, or not really? Not really. I, I deliver them and I, then I send them, I, I make sure that they, they like them. Mm -hmm. If there's any final touch-ups or anything else that they need. And, and then uh, I send the final invoice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's it. Awesome. And that's it. Thank you for sharing the process. This was super interesting. Of course. <laughs> here. Yeah, awesome. Now, you mentioned that you like photographing ice cream. And you mentioned you might already have some tips for us about photographing. Because that's a tricky one. And you live like in Austin, so it must be really hot there. Like, um, <laughs> how does it work photographing ice cream? Um, it is very hot, but I, I turn the AC up um in my apartment which is key um and i've actually never shot regular ice cream no that dairy ice cream uh, uh -huh. everything i've shot is has been vegan uh -huh. so it's, it, it's even trickier to work with um because you can't i don't know if you know those the pictures of the ice cream cones where it has like a little fluted like um on the scoop like it has that yeah. layer around it yeah, yeah um you can't really uh get that with vegan ice cream okay. i've tried <laughs> but, yeah. um but it does help to have an extra person uh extra set mm -hmm. of hands is mm -hmm. the key um because you don't you know you want someone like actually preparing it and bringing it in so your hands aren't covered in melted ice cream yeah um and what's helped me is like actually putting the scoops pre-making the scoops and putting on putting them on a baking sheet mm -hmm. and then freezing them so that they're ready to like just take off and plop on a cone yeah and um letting the ice cream sit out for a few minutes um to get a little bit softer mm -hmm. and if there is any melted parts of it like i'll microwave um just a little bit of it and like drip the melted part uh, on the frozen to control it a bit. Uh -huh. yeah to control a little bit more um and using a small spoon helps with that um and uh, what else how do you scoop it because that's a tricky part so before even freezing you prefer prepare the scoop balls right mm -hmm. i try doing that but scooping the ice cream to make them look pretty like that scoop is so difficult I know the scooping is really hard. The the girl that helped me with the last shoot, she yeah. used to like, she ran all the events. And so she's uh -huh. so good at making perfect scoop. Yeah. But there is a, an ice cream scoop. It's the one that's all metal and it has a thick okay. handle. Okay. Um, and it's like a dark gray metal. Those are okay. the best ice cream scoops. I know okay. there's like new fancy ones where you can squeeze it and it, and it kind of like, pushes the scoop out uh -huh. um oh like those the... don't... yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> those, those do not i don't find those work very well okay but those old school like dark metal thick ones uh -huh. and if you just you kind of have to like get on top of the pint or whatever uh -huh. you're scooping out of and just do kind of like scoop it around a few times so it's creating this perfect ball of ice cream yeah and then try and if you have more this is really hard to explain without showing. i know oh my god good luck <laughs> listeners and then if you try and like press it down onto uh -huh. the baking sheet yeah they create that little like what is it oh called? i know like that around a bit like uh yeah it's yeah. like a little yeah i know I what know. you mean <laughs> you know what i mean i know so what you mean that helps in it, and it does help to be, to have it sit out for a few minutes till it's a little bit melted uh -huh. and then refreeze those. I think shooting with artificial light is key because you know how, how 
spectacle the weather can be in the yeah, sun so you behind have a, a cloud. Yeah, like, oh. you can prepare everything just before you bring it out there, and then the light is yeah, perfect. Yeah. Every yeah, everything ready. Um, if you're shooting a cone, get something stable. I have like a little mm -hmm. cone stand where oh. you put the cone in and like have have everything ready ahead of time. Uh -huh. Um. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. You just nice. play. Like, like you have to be patient. You just have to, you know, probably refreeze it and do it again. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that's those, those are all my tips. I nice. have awesome. I've never ma you. never made fake ice cream. I've I've read no, how people make either. make it out of mashed potatoes or something. I'm like, why not just use the real thing? <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's tricky, but it's also fun in a way because you're forced to kind of I don't know hurry and prepare and control everything just before I don't know I like it as well yeah. <laughs> and then you can eat it that's the important part exactly you can enjoy the ice cream yeah nice um I saw that you worked with quite big names like uh Bob's Red Mill was that your client or was that a sponsored um like a post kind of thing that was, I did a couple of sponsored posts with them two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they were, it was, it was fine to uh, work with them. Um, I've done a couple of bigger, bigger name clients. Um, I think the biggest one was Ghirardelli. I did that at the beginning of the year, which that was a fun experience. I actually got to hire a food stylist. Oh, nice. And was that for a shoot or was that also for sponsored? Um, that was actually recipe. for their, for them. They, the, uh, mm -hmm. Get it, it was for like their summer s'mores. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, I haven't, I actually haven't even, I'm not sure where they're going to use these photos still. Not yet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but that one was, that wasn't a sponsored post, which uh -huh. was exciting and also, uh, nerve wracking because the client like zoomed in uh -huh. and sh we shared, uh, I shared my Lightroom. Uh -huh. Oh, so we could see even the progress beforehand. That's a tricky one because they need to understand that you're still building up instead of like, this is not the final shot. Wait a moment. No, I feel like that would be the, it oh, was difficult. So it was so hard. Um, we, didn't really make, we didn't create our uh, perfect s'more until 7 p.m. Oh. that night, like after the whole day. Uh huh. And we finally figured out the process of making, like, uh -huh. okay, you need to uh, roast. We were roasting marshmallows over yeah. my stove. Yeah. And we had tried previously to like put them in the oven and. I mean, it's such a mess. S'mores are such a mess. Like, uh, I, I think ice cream is easy, way easier compared to s'mores. Oh, God, yeah. So, um, it was so, I was so nervous because he's like, can you share your screen with me? And I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, let me preface this with, no, these are going to be edited and we're yeah. still, we still haven't figured it out. But, I mean, he was so... Um, particular about like the way the chocolate would drip over uh -huh. the marshmallow and the marshmallow needed to be a little bit more charred and I mean it was so scary <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's tricky but at the end it worked out or not at the end at the end of the day I think we figured out how to make one but we still uh -huh. didn't have that perfect drip uh-huh um and we tried everything from a heat gun to a, to a torch. Uh -huh. um, and so I ended up having to shoot the next day uh -huh. um, on my own. Uh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't have the food stylist. Oh no. Um, so I redid pretty much everything the next day. Yeah. And I ended up getting, I think I got one, one really good shot. Yeah. Um, where all the elements came together. Oh, that's perfect. But that was really nerve wracking. Just, uh -huh. um, it was a lot of pressure and I, it was fun having people, you know, having, you know, you have the budget to hire a team of people. Yeah, that's fine. I didn't have a team. My team was the food stylist and an assistant, uh -huh. um, but still having, 
working more hands on set yeah. and collaborating with someone else was so much fun, which oh, nice. I would love to do more of. Oh, sick. Is there anywhere where we can see the picture already or not yet? I think I posted on Instagram a couple check. months ago. I'm going to check. I'm going to go and find it later. That one too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Then I'll put it in a podcast, like a <laughs> podcast page when people can see what the hell we're talking about because it's really fun. Yeah, exactly. nice. Oh, fun. Awesome. I heard you are working, I believe, working right now on a book. Yes. Um, I am shooting a foraging cookbook. Okay. I, it's not my cookbook. Um, okay. It's someone I've met. Uh, I, I took his foraging classes uh, a couple yeah. times, and I finally told him, um, hey, can we collaborate on a, like, a wild foods cocktail? Like, uh -huh. you give me a recipe, yeah, and then I'll, sh I'll photograph it. Mm -hmm. And um, that that brought up the conversation of oh you know he was working on another contributing to another cookbook mm -hmm. and so I photographed a few recipes for that which was like a wild foods cookbook okay so uh from then um he knew what I could do and yeah. he said actually I'm you know I just I'm writing something and I'd love for you to photograph the whole thing oh. and this one is all about uh what you can cook while you're backpacking. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's That's so much fun. You can make on like a campfire. Yeah. And it, it's not my style at all. So do you need to photograph also then on a campfire kind of food next to the fire or not? Exactly. So Ooh. there are all these little <laughs> recipes like, you know, digging up herbs and plants and making uh -huh. them in, a, in a, like a cast iron skillet over a fire oh, and <laughs> um it's it's definitely it hasn't been easy so far because I'm out there like looking for these plants mm -hmm. it's not like I can just go to the grocery store and buy everything yeah. and cook it and shoot it in my studio uh -huh. which is is my process um so right now I'm trying to figure out uh, where can I find horse mint and horsetail uh, and bee balm? And I'm writing all these Facebook groups. Like, does anybody uh -huh. have this in their front yard? I oh, can God, yeah. I forage some of it. Um, but it must be a it, season also at the same time. So you have to be, oh, God, yeah. Exactly. So oh. I have to wait until fall for some of the plants <laughs> to bloom. I know, like, this is this is a lot of uh, logistics. Yeah. Um, and then trying to think about, you know, making a, a campfire uh -huh. on my own. And I'm doing everything. Like, they don't, they don't have, like, um, they don't have a budget for, um, like, a stylist or uh -huh. a creative director and all that. So I'm trying to figure out how to, how to start a campfire um, <laughs> in my grandma's backyard without, like, setting the whole backyard. Yeah, on yeah, fire. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but then good skills to learn for like, I don't know, for later. That's amazing. I think knowing how <laughs> yeah, to make a campfire and cook food on the fire. That is like, that's nice. It's like, yeah. So it's, it, it's, it's an interesting, um, it, it's an interesting cookbook and uh -huh. I love learning about plants and this guy is so knowledgeable about every plant. So our, our conversations on the phone so far I'm, I'm always asking him like what does this do and like uh -huh. medicinally like how can this prickly pear help you and yeah, yeah, yeah. um so he, I love I love talking to him and picking his brain about <laughs> about plants oh, but totally. so it'll be fun it, it's my my summer project and uh -huh. I've kind of paused everything else going on so I can really really dive deep into making it look cohesive I think that's another challenge is yeah especially you know, because it's a bit spread as well isn't it mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh that's nice well I'm gonna keep my eyes open because I really I, I I'm very interested in uh, foraging as well like I, I don't know much yet but I really want to learn and uh and cooking on a fire is something I'm also super excited so now I'm gonna <laughs> keep my eyes open then it's out 
That sounds really fun. Nice. Oh, that's fun. Um, okay. Now, um, some closing little questions. Sure. Um, not to hold you on too long. Um, so it seems like you're having fun um, doing food photography. What is most fun for you in your job? <sighs> I think... I think I wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't fun. I think we ha like you have mm -hmm. to have fun and kind of let go of yeah perfectionism and it, I think doing reels is, has been a lot of fun yeah. for me just uh -huh. because it's new and exciting and I don't feel like I you know I spend sometimes I spend three to four hours just setting up one scene for one photo. The yeah. end of just being one static photo. Uh huh. But uh, for reels, you can just be yourself and let go and film on your phone. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, you're, I feel like I'm helping people. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm having more fun doing that than actually photographing. But yeah. I, I don't know. I try not to take everything so seriously. Uh -huh. Um, I, I just, I think collaborating with people is, is really um, fun uh -huh. and yeah, like learning all the techniques and practicing and growing as an artist and as a photographer, there's just always something to learn. The community is great and yeah. supportive. Yeah. Um, it's just fascinating. Like there's so much food to shoot. There's so many recipes to be created and you can get inspiration everywhere. It's just like endless, like endless possibilities with what you can do. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. I love it so much. It's, it's going to be my lifelong <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. journey to learning everything I, I can. Yeah. Nice. Same here. <laughs> so that's nice. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, then I wanted to ask you if you have some um, recommendations on the books or bloggers or YouTube channels or TikToks even for um, other food photographers for perhaps inspiration or learning. I need to get on TikTok more. Um, I haven't, I haven't uh, been on there much, but... I love, I mean, I have blogs I go to that have been my main source of inspiration. Like, I'm sure you know our food stories. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, no, Nora beautiful. and Laura. Oh, my gosh. That was why I wanted to learn food photography. Uh -huh. um, I love Ava Cosmos Flores. Yeah. Um, I love how she's inspired by nature and uses everything from her homestead and her yeah. photography. And I don't know how to say her name. Is it B B Lubas? B Lubas. B Lubas. B I I've read her book three times. Yeah. Um. Nice. I think she's just always pushing the envelope with composition mm -hmm. and styling, and there's always something special about every photo. And I love that she just takes the time. Like it feels like she takes the time to really think about. Mm -hmm. the story behind the photo and just there's always something a little bit extra where you're like oh wow like I haven't seen yeah, that yeah, done yeah. Yeah. she's a great inspiration um I love Joni Simon's YouTube channel she's just a great teacher yeah amazing yeah I've taken a few of her classes and then other books, I mean, I actually have one sitting here. This one, uh, Michael Freeman, The Photographer's Eye. Okay. I don't know if you've read this, but it's no. all about composition, learning composition. Okay. And the photographer's it's not eye. even about food, but yeah. I, try and, I try and study composition yes. in other types of um, photography. I like yeah. looking at architecture and mm -hmm. seeing how people use lights and they shape light and use form and structure and texture. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely look outside of food photography <laughs> for yeah. inspiration. And that's I think that's good. so helpful, especially like when you're yeah. in a creative slump, like exactly. stop shooting food. Yeah. 
do something else, like shoot with film, um, <laughs> shoot with the Polaroid, and like go yeah. take pictures of your friends for a while. Uh-huh. Um, not to get and stuck. when you come That's back to one. food, like yeah, you have like all this other inspiration, and it, it, you have like a fresh perspective on mm-hmm. shooting food again. Yeah. To have so, something more new and more interesting and to get out of it. Uh, that's a good tip. That's a really good tip. Yeah. Makes sense. But yeah, I love those. Those are my, my book recommendations. Thank you. Cookbooks are great. Yeah. Magazines. Mm-hmm. Magazines are so inexpensive now mm-hmm. for subscriptions. Like I, I think I get 10 magazines a month. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But they're so cheap. They're like $6 a year. Sick. And so I just rip out photos, and uh-huh. even if it's something where I'm inspired by color, yeah, um, and it has nothing to do with food. Uh-huh. Like I put it all on a mood board, on a cork board, uh-huh. and I stare at it every day. Ah, oh, sick! Like so. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. That's also a good inspiration source for sure. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Then I wanted to ask if you have any advice for the beginner food photographers. I have so much advice. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. I mean, I feel like everyone says this, but practice mm-hmm. all the time. You can take every food photography class, any photography class. You can read all the books, but you're going to learn fastest from practicing and actually setting aside time to practice and deliberately practicing Mm -hmm. which instead of just picking up your camera mindlessly and taking pictures of your dinner Mm -hmm. you know focus your attention on what you want to improve upon Mm -hmm. and make notes and revisit those notes Mm -hmm. um and that's how you're going to improve your craft by deliberately practicing. So, um, that's a good one. You know, like, I mean, study a, a one subject, like take, take a strawberry and shoot it in soft lighting and then uh-huh. shoot it in hard lighting and then uh-huh. do a lighter, lighter shot and a moodier shot. Um, and, Get off Instagram. That's my main. Oh God, yeah. It's like, stop comparing yourself to other people that have been doing yeah. this for ten years, um, and really zero in on what you need to work on, uh-huh. and assess your portfolio, um, assess your work, and and look at your progress from the first photo you've taken to where you are now, and um, figure out what you like what your weakness is and and work on those things yeah and the more time you you get off your phone and put in the other room um just spend time with your camera like get to know your camera learn uh how to compose um and get outside go to an art museum and like seek inspiration outside of just instagram and pinterest because we we get so like stuck in the same what everyone else is doing it's Mm -hmm. just it's gonna happen like everyone's shooting I don't know cakes in a moody with a moody shot like don't don't like be inspired by what everyone else is doing Mm -hmm. and, and try and like really dig deep into who you are and your soul and what you want to create yeah and and just I don't know do it pick up your camera all the time practice yeah 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 definitely these are really 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 good tips um and on that note then my question would be where can the listeners find you you can find me um at mrs barnes it's mrs dot barnes on instagram i also have my second account that i was talking yeah. about uh heather barnes photo uh-huh. and uh my website is mrs barnes.com so feel free to email me or reach out on Instagram. And yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Heather, so much. This was so wonderful talking to you. Thank you for joining my podcast. Oh, thank you. It's so lovely talking to you. I love watching all your 
videos on TikTok. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>